Barack Obama is still a figure that is so uniting for a large swath of the country and painfully triggering, dysregulating and disorienting for those who deeply, deeply despise him. And that was very much in evidence from the reaction to last night's speech. We're going to look at a bunch of different parts of Barack Obama's speech on night two of the DNC. But the moment that was something else was not only Barack Obama mentioning Trump's age, which is increasingly a, an area of concern for voters, not only Barack Obama mentioning that escalator, that damn escalator that Trump keeps talking about, but Barack Obama talking about Trump's obsession with size and using his hands to allude to penis size as what Trump is really insecure about. And this set off right wingers. Oh, name calling. They're going low. They're, we're going to address that in a moment. Here is the full lead up to this incredible moment from Barack Obama. The people who will decide this election are asking a very simple question. Who will fight for me? Who's thinking about my future, about my children's future, about our future together? One thing is for certain, Donald Trump is not losing sleep over that question. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of of gripes and grievances that, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. <laughs> So listen, that is not a, that is a clip. That is a moment that is not shriveling one bit on social media. You could argue it's mushrooming, really. And the big part of it, I'm going to play it once more. Just that last piece. It's the hand gesture and Obama himself looking down at his own hand. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. Now, all of a sudden, Republicans are saying, oh, that's so low. That's so low. It's an ad hominem. It's low brow. It's name calling all of the things that they've been doing for years now. That was beautifully ex uh, executed satire that goes directly to the heart of Donald Trump's insecurities. What is really Trump's insecurity when he talks about the size of his crowd? It is not what I would run a campaign on Trump's penis size, but as an absolutely brilliantly executed interlude of satire in a speech that overall was excellent. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Here's another great moment from Barack Obama's speech last night. We need a president who actually cares about the millions of people all across this country who wake up every single day to do the essential often thankless work to care for our sick, to clean our streets, to deliver our packages. We need a president who will stand up for their right to bargain for better wages and working conditions. And Kamala will be that president. Yes, she can. A yes, she can chant breaking out. And then Barack Obama very astutely reminding everyone, we kind of know what four more years of Trump would be like. We have the first four years as a reminder, and the sequel is usually not quite as good. From a guy who's act has 
let's face it, gotten pretty stale. We do not need four more years of bluster and bumbling and chaos. We have seen that movie before, and we all know that the sequel is usually worse. America's ready for a new chapter. America's ready for a better story. We are ready for a president, Kamala Harris. And then finally, Barack Obama closing out the speech uh, to significant enthusiasm. That's an understatement. We each do our part over the next 77 days. If we knock on doors, if we make phone calls, if we talk to our friends, if we listen to our neighbors, if we work like we've never worked before, if we hold firm to our convictions, we will elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States and Tim Rawls as the next vice president of the United States. We will elect leaders up and down the ballot who will fight for the hopeful, forward-looking America we all believe in, and together we too will build a country that is more secure and more just, more equal, and more free. So let's get to work. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. And, uh, the reaction, of course, to the Obamas, both of them, uh, really a reminder of the fact that it is not that there is lack of enthusiasm for the ideas. It's that you need the right people delivering those ideas. And Barack Obama closing out night two tonight, Tim Walls will formally accept being the vice presidential running mate, Bill Clinton will speak. I hope you'll join me uh, probably 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. They these these have been going late. That's for sure. Wish I was on the West Coast. Let me put it that way. I could get to bed a lot earlier, uh, but an excellent second night. And I hope to see you uh, tonight for night three. Not all men's underwear is the same with traditional underwear. The sticking and the rubbing are something many of us know all too well. But our sponsor, Sheath Underwear, puts it to an end once and for all. Sheath Underwear is ultra light and breathable. You can barely tell it's there. But importantly, Sheath is uniquely designed with two pouches in the front that separate everything out, giving you an extra confidence boost throughout the day. Air can flow in between, keeping things dry and comfortable all day. No more sweating and sticking. Sheath underwear is the type of thing that's hard to fully appreciate until you've tried it. Try a pair yourself and you'll finally understand the level of comfort and morale that you've been missing out on. They come in a bunch of different designs. They have something for everybody. The quality is amazing, super long lasting. Unlike the underwear you currently use, which you might have to replace every six months, Sheath is giving my audience 20% off with the code Pacman. Go to sheathunderwear.com slash Pacman. The link is down below.